longtime trial attorney Karen Conti is with us to talk more about this case. It's interesting, as Caitlin laid out, you've got this group, the Innocence Project, seeking evidence versus actually having evidence to present to the judge. So how does he factor in, he or she factor in that in deciding to proceed? Well, at this point in the appeals, um, they're going to need some evidence to say, hey, you didn't go down this path and it wasn't turned over to us and now we need a new trial. And you can't, it's sort of like a vicious cycle. You can't get the evidence and have a trial, a new trial, unless you have the evidence. So you have to push to get these things tested. And so, you know, the judge should do it. And, you know, again, if there's nothing there, there's nothing there. That's going to stop uh, his appeals right now. What's interesting, I think, is that a lot of the appeals prior to this time had to do with the death penalty. And the death penalty was given to Peterson, but it was off the table because of jury misconduct. So now we're looking really at innocence. And this innocence process Project group is very, very good, and they've been very successful and aggressive in getting some convictions overturned. Right, but at this point, it's just a theory. They need the judge to unseal this to proceed. What was the crux of this case? I mean, thinking back as I watched it unfold, um, it was all circumstantial evidence, right, that led to his conviction. But it, it was also just the idea that he, his wife was missing and he wasn't looking as they searched the home. There was the correspondence with the girlfriend saying that his wife had passed away right you know remind people about the case and the evidence that was laid out in court well there really was no physical evidence tying peterson to this crime and you know you're absolutely right it was a lot of bad conduct on behalf of peterson i mean he was having an affair that doesn't mean he's a murderer he was lying to the girlfriend you know he didn't seem very concerned with her being missing and she was pregnant which all you know wraps into he would have perhaps a motive to kill her if he didn't want to be married to her anymore and have child support but again is that beyond a reasonable doubt i i think that was a tough case Although the jury seemed to be pretty convinced of it because not only did they convict him, they gave him the death sentence. So, um, you know, we're going to see if there's any of that DNA on that mattress, as your reporter uh, alluded to. That's going to open this case up, and it's going to be much more difficult to prosecute a case 20 years after the crime. Yeah. Will they be able to get the evidence to support the theory at this point? Uh, I know Lacey's family has maintained that Scott Peterson is the one who murdered Lacey all these years later, but he has maintained his, his innocence. Uh, Karen, thank you. This is going to be one to watch, certainly. Thanks, Marty. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.